This video is sponsored by Discover Data Science, powered by Wiley. More on them in just a moment. In this video, I'm going to talk about some of the ways that you could do to stay up to date in data science. And so before we begin, let's start with the basics. What is data science? So in a nutshell, data science is a field that makes use of data to drive the decision-making process. And it does this by collecting data, pre-processing it, and then using it to build a predictive model from which insights could be taken from. And in 2012, Davenport and Patil published the landmark article in the Harvard Business Review and said that data scientists are the sexiest job of the 21st century. And so ever since, the importance of data has been growing at an exponential rate. Companies are adopting data science, data has been coined the new oil, the new gold, and that if companies are not adopting data science, they're probably missing out on the insights they could have gained from the data. And as the field expands and grow, new tools are being implemented or being released, new algorithms are being developed, data science methodology and workflows are being created and optimized. The field of data science is quite vast and large, and if you take a look at it, it is comprised of many sub-disciplines mashed into one. And so a great challenge for practicing professionals in the data domain, as well as the aspiring data professionals who are breaking into the field. The ability to keep up to date on all of the latest developments in data is a highly sought after skill that data professionals will in one way or the other figure out and acquire so that they could stay up to date, so that they could harness the latest developments and breakthroughs in the field to their own data projects. And so in my former profession as a university professor doing research in bioinformatics, there are hundreds of new papers, research articles being published every day, reporting the development of novel algorithms, novel approach, workflows, new and bigger data sets, faster model building, better performance, better accuracy, more insights from the data, and in order to develop innovative projects that could then be published and provide value to the scientific community, it is essential and necessary to be able to stay up to date, not only in bioinformatics, but also in the domain expertise of biology, chemistry, drug discovery, as well as machine learning algorithms that are being developed, optimized, modified. And so the ability to stay up to date on all of these latest developments and breakthroughs will give any researchers or professionals a cutting edge as they could take a high level look in the field and figure out what are some of the data gaps or gaps in knowledge that could then be explored where machine learning could then be used to extract information and insights from. And so here are some of the ways that I use to stay up to date in data science as well as bioinformatics. And they are conveniently categorized into seven points. So point number one, consume content. This is obvious, right? Some of the ways that you could consume content is by reading books, reading research articles, reading blog posts, watch YouTube videos, listen to podcasts. And as you consume the content, you'll be learning from the experiences of the authors who have synthesized and compressed all of their knowledge into written form or video format or also audio format. However, content consumption is a passive process process in that if you just passively listen or read but then you don't put it into action most of the knowledge that you will gain from this approach would not be instilled in you and so that takes us to point number two which is create content or content creation and so as a researcher when you discover new ideas new breakthroughs you will have to summarize that into a research article and in the process of doing that you might present your work at some scientific conferences or some meetups or a lab meeting, and particularly any researchers or graduate students doing research will have to write research articles. And a typical research article will comprise of some of the background knowledge of the field, which requires you to do literature review. And in the process, you'll be a master in that specific subdomain. Then you talk about some of the methods and materials that you have used to perform the research. And then you'll be presenting some of the findings in the form of summary tables and also figures of illustrations and plots. 
And finally, you'll be discussing how your research results are related to prior research that are published. And then you're concluding everything in the conclusion and then making some anticipation of what to expect in the future. In a similar fashion, you could also write blog posts that will essentially summarize what you have learned. For example, if today you're gonna learn about how to build a machine learning model using Random Forest, then in the process of doing so, if you also create an article, write a blog post, about your journey and how did you exactly install the specific packages like scikit-learn into your computer? How did you exactly separate your data? Which machine learning algorithms did you use? What is the thought process that are going on in your mind when you're building the machine learning model? So if you could put all of these thoughts and ideas into written form, this will greatly help you to consolidate all of the information and crystallize that knowledge into a tangible format that you and others could refer to long after you have physically built the model. And in a similar fashion, you could also record some videos in the form of tutorial videos and then add your commentary into the video to help the viewers learn the thought process of your machine learning model building journey. Or you could also host some podcasts where you invite some data professionals to talk with you on data topics of interest. And in the process of doing the podcast, you will also learn the thought process of the person that you're interviewing and they will learn from you as well. And let's say that you have interviewed 10 or 20 guests on the show on your YouTube channel or on your Spotify channel, you'll be learning from the life experiences of these professionals that they have gone through and they have shared to you. Or maybe you might have some specific struggles that they could provide answers or shed light on. And so this brings us to point number three, which is to follow thought leaders and influencers in the data domain in order to gain access to updates and information in the field. And so this primarily involves networking on social media platforms such as Twitter, LinkedIn, and oftentimes a lot of the tools, new libraries in Python, in R that I use on my tutorial in the Data Professor YouTube channel oftentimes come from these social media messages, tweets, posts. Some amazing influencers on these platforms such as Philip Volet, Charlie Warkner, Prasoon Pratam, Ken G, YK, also known as CS Dojo, Albert Bellamy, and so many others have shared their thought process, their advice, their struggles, their ways and solutions of overcoming those, as well as new data resources that will be beneficial to all of the professionals in the field. And aside from networking with like-minded professionals, social media platforms also also offer another great point. For example, there are learning challenges such as the 100 days of code, 66 days of data, 30 days of streamlit that provides a platform for learners to network amongst each other because the learning journey might feel lonely and having an accountability buddy will help the learning journey be so much more fun. And so a short message from our sponsor, Discover Data Science powered by Wiley, which is the premier information hub for the field of data science with in-depth guides on careers, degrees, and industry-leading programming languages. Discover Data Science's goal is to provide accessible resources and materials for prospective students and professionals. Through Discover Data Science expert-driven articles and publications, You'll learn more about which data science degrees help accomplish your professional goals, the tools and skills that are necessary for a successful career in the field, which career paths appeal to your personal interest, how to land a job in data science. And as you know, data science jobs are rapidly expanding on a global scale with a growing need for qualified data science professionals. It's never been a better time to earn your degree and pursue a career in this rewarding field. You can begin your data science journey by visiting discoverdatascience.org powered by Wiley or visit the link in the description below. Point number four, play and experiment. As new data science tools, algorithms, and techniques are being released practically every day or week, what I normally like to do is to download these tools and then play around with them, see how it could help my data science project. And if it's useful, then I'll implement that and integrate that with the projects that I'm working on. 
And so where do I go for this information? Well, as I mentioned already in point number three, most of the information are obtained from other influencers in the data domain, or even some are shared by you guys and gals in the comment section of YouTube videos. Some of you might suggest that I create some videos about a new tool or technique that you have came across on. And if it's within my expertise, then I'll explore that and see if it could be useful to all of you. And if it is, then I'll create a video about it. And the great thing about this is that it's so much fun when you're exploring some new ideas, new tools, new algorithms, new techniques, and playing around with it is so much fun. Point number five, attend conferences and meetups. And so in light of the pandemic, most of conferences and scientific meetups have gone online. So now you could participate in webinars, in virtual conferences, and aside from the differences in the delivery format, whether it is in person or online, the core benefit of attending conferences and meetups is the opportunity that you get from connecting with like-minded individuals. For example, if you're attending a bioinformatic conference, you'll be meeting other people who are in the same situation as you as a researcher, as a graduate student. They might be undergoing similar struggles as you, similar problems that you are facing. And as you talk with them, you'll learn how they solve their problems and they'll learn how you solve your problems. And maybe the problems that you think that you're stuck on could easily be solved by listening to the experiences of others. So let me know in the comment section which conferences or meetups that you found helpful. Point number six is to use the ample learning resources on data science that are available on the internet. And by learning resources, I mean there's YouTube videos, there's podcasts on Spotify about data science, there are countless learning platforms like Udemy, edX, Coursera, DataCamp, DataQuest, 365 Data Science. And as mentioned recently, there's also another learning resource that you should definitely take a look at. And it's the Discover Data Science powered by Wiley, who happens to be the sponsor of the video. And if you haven't yet checked it out, do so and let me know in the comment section what you think of it. And so finally, in point number seven, the final advice is to do data science. And it's the tagline of all of my YouTube videos that the best way to learn data science is to do data science. And as I have already mentioned earlier on in the video, when you consume content, there must be a way from which you could put that knowledge that you have gained into action. And as I've already mentioned, one of the ways is to create content. And another way is to put it into practical implementation, to actually use it to build machine learning models, to actually use it to pre-process data, to determine the accuracy or performance of the model, to figure out new ways to balance your data set, perform feature selection, create a meta learner to fuse several learning algorithms together to extract insights from your data via the use of feature importance such as SHAP library. And there's so much more. And so the learning should be coupled with the doing. And if you could consume content, create content, implement the project, network with like-minded individuals, and keep up to date in the field by learning from courses, YouTube videos, podcasts, which helps you to gain experiences from others. I'm quite confident that yeah, you're going to be able to stay up to date in this very large and chaotic field of data. And so let me know in the comment section which other approach that you use to stay up to date in the data domain. And so if you stay this far in the video, please drop a star emoji so that I know that you're the real one. And also support the video by smashing the like button, subscribing if you haven't already, turning on notifications so that you'll be notified of the next video. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. And please enjoy the journey.